Iran's nuclear program in exchange for lifting sanctions. For decades now, Iran's nuclear program has been a bone of contention between Tehran and parts of the international community. While the Islamic Republic maintains that its program is only aimed at civilian purposes, there have been grey areas pointing at Iran's active development of nuclear weapons. Well, our special correspondents Alexander Turnbull and Antoine Mariotti have been given access to Tehran's nuclear research reactor and have asked a French nuclear advisor to comment on the footage they've brought back. This document offers special insight on one of the thorniest diplomatic issues in contemporary history. Its cooling tower rises above the compound, home to the Iranian Atomic Energy Agency. Prince Van Kat was granted special access to the Tehran Research Reactor, the country's first ever built nuclear facility. Tehran Research uh, Reactor is uh, constructed and designed in uh, 1960s in order to perform uh, for, uh, fundamental nuclear research. The US supplied the reactor and for over a decade it ran on weapons grade 93 percent enriched uranium. But after revolutionary Iran cut ties with the West, the country went in search of new partners. This is a typical uh, standard fuel element which is produced uh, by uh, the Argentinian company INVAP. And we have tried to to duplicate this fuel element exactly the same as this one, as I show you. A nuclear weapons advisor, Francois Giry, has traveled to Iran 18 times in the last decade. He's familiar with the Tehran reactor. The disclosure of such technical details comes to him as a surprise. It is quite remarkable that an Iranian official should mention the name of an exporting country, an exporting company. It shows they want to be precise. They're saying, we're telling the truth and you can check. They've decided to be more open and say they have nothing to hide. In the late 80s, the reactor was converted to operate with low enriched uranium and Argentina provided the fuel, but just enough for 10 to 20 years. The uh, operation time and the samples to be irradiated was increased and increased, and that is why at the moment we exhausted from uh, the uh, abroad fuel elements and we, we have tried, of course, the government has tried to produce the, the domestic fuel element in the country. According to our guide, a third of the fuel burnt here is made domestically, and authorities have plans to produce more to meet growing needs of the Russian-built Boucher power plant and expand the country's nuclear capacities. We are formulating, we have um, agreed to have two more new uh, type of, this type of uh, uh, power plants, and there is going to be more again after these three. Two stories below, scientists are working on the medical applications developed here to help treat cancer patients. Uh, we produce uh, some radio pharmaceutical, radio pharmaceutical. Here you see uh, we have uh, a special uh, radio pharmaceutical as the technician 99M for diagnostic imaging agent. It means uh, when we inject to the patient, you have a picture, for example, for diagnostic, not therapy. Iran admitted to isolating polonium-210 in the early 90s in a lab just like this one. The polonium can be used to trigger a chain reaction in a nuclear weapon, but the government says it shut down military experiments years ago. They're truly transparent about the installations kept under supervision. However, Iranians believe the inspectors shouldn't have access to facilities which aren't directly linked to their nuclear program. On the other hand, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it would be more comfortable if it could inspect facilities where Iran's nuclear capabilities might help develop other technologies. All the doors are open, but there are also some regulations, there are some standards. Let's say, for instance, in, in France, in your own country, in European country, the doors are not open for everybody to enter. 
Iran has gone under inspection more than any other country in the history of the agency. The PR department conducted the visit under tight supervision. A security official insisted on going through our camera's memory card and deleted the clips he deemed sensitive. For François Giré, the Iranians have good reasons to be suspicious. Well, this is specific to Iran. This is because several of their scientists were assassinated or have been targeted by assassination attempts. So they've really tightened such precautionary and security measures these last five to seven years. Ten years ago, they didn't have to worry so much, and there were no security measures of this kind. Apart from the former chief supervisor who retired in recent years and was brought in for the organized tour, none of the employees at the site agreed to give their name or appear on camera without a mask. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by my guest, international lawyer and Iran specialist, Ardovan Ami Aslani. Hello. Hello. Thank, thank you, you for very having much. me. Thank you for being with us on France Vanquette. Now, these were journalists, not IAEA investigators visiting the Tehran facility. But as you heard there, uh, the, the man they talked to, the analyst they talked to, was surprised at this openness. What do you make of it? I think the Iranians are doing whatever is in their power to explain to the Western community at large, and to the IA in particular, that they have nothing to hide. And as a matter of fact, the achievement of your journalists is, is quite remarkable. I think this is the first time that a team of journalists was authorized into an Iranian facility with a nuclear reactor. What we witnessed over there was basically a reactor which belonged to the University of Tehran. It's a small research reactor. The big ones are the ones at Natanz and Fordo. And we should bear in mind that all of these reactors, wherever they are situated, are constantly monitored by the IAEA, 24 hours, 707. And there's a necessary amount of secrecy, obviously, in these facilities, as there is in France. Um, the officials giving the tour mentioned that a number of scientists have come under attack. Who by? Well, this is something that is up for debate. The Iranians are saying it is the Israelis. The Israelis have not commented about this. But one thing which is certain is that these five Iranian scientists involved in a nuclear program have been assassinated. A number of the others have been targeted by terrorist elements within Iran. So it is legitimate, as far as Iran is concerned, for them to try to implement as much as possible sufficient security measures to protect their scientists. Now, you mentioned Israel there. Uh, these talks are perhaps reaching a new crossroad. Uh, do you think Israel will ever be reassured about Iran's uh, nuclear capacity? Well, as we all know, Israel is by itself a nuclear power. It was officially acknowledged by Olmert, one of the previous pr uh, prime ministers. Israel strives to remain the sole nuclear power in the Middle East. And we can understand, in light of what is happening in the entire Middle East, that they may have some valid reasons to do so. However, Iran doesn't strive today, at least that's what they're saying, to become a nuclear military power. They want to be able to produce electricity. They want to be able to produce medical equipment and medical isotopes for their own local needs. And they want to do this within the framework of of the International Non-Proliferation Treaty. The entire debate about the Iranian nuclear facilities is basically an issue of trust. The Western powers, the United States in particular, and Israel have a tendency to consider that Iran is embarking upon or has embarked upon an occult program so as to develop military capacity as far as its nuclear ambitions are concerned. The Iranians are saying otherwise. And this entire discussion procedure is going on for 12 years now, will culminate to hopefully a fruitful solution next Monday on November 24th, whereby the Iranians need to provide assurances to the Western community that at the end of the day, all they're seeking to do is to follow a peaceful path. And do you think that an agreement will be found? I think today nothing is certain. It's a, there's a 50-50% chance that an agreement will be found on Monday. However, if it is not, we won't end up in a deadlock situation whereby no other alternative date will be determined. I think that if there won't be an agreement, there will be an understanding between the parties, Iran and Group of 5 plus 1, the permanent members of the Security Council plus Germany, to postpone by another additional two months. We should remember that the initial um, joint plan of action provided for a six-month period that could be renewed for another six months. So we're talking about 12 months. And basically speaking, by the November 4th deadline, we're only 10 months into the initial 12-month period envisaged. So it is possible that it will be another postponement.
And can international issues such as the Islamic State surge, for example, or the gas link to what's happening in Ukraine have an impact on these talks, perhaps? Of course. When you look at Iran, per se, you're talking about a country that is exactly at crossroads today as far as the geopolitics of the Middle East is concerned. The uh, Islamo-fascist movement that we're witnessing through the so-called Islamic State can find a valid and efficient answer in the Shia Iran military. Iran, because of its vast gas resources, could provide an alternative to European gas needs from, from Gazprom, and it could actually respond to the gas needs of Europe. The return of Iran to the international economic community is going to be the greatest addition to the world financial system ever since the absorption of Western European countries. So Iran and the return of Iran to the international community will have multiple consequences on a wide array of aspects, be it political, military or economic. Adavan Ami Aslan, thank you very much for having talked to us on Cosmic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's where we're leaving it for this hour live from Paris. But stay with us. There'll be a full news update at the top of the hour.